Hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So this evening we got some chores to do. Uh, we're gonna run out, check on some piglets, um, check on some pigs, angel, get eggs. Um, and I'll show you the property. We had a rainstorm here, gosh, yesterday, like you ain't never seen. Um, it rained, it was cold, it was nasty. I mean, just terrible. And the place is just muddy. I mean, everything's just as muddy as it can be. And uh, got a story to tell you about little mama. She threw us a real curveball yesterday. So stick around for that. We'll tell you about uh, about what happened with her. But uh, nothing really particular tonight other than just some chores. So hang out with us for a little bit and uh, let's see what we can get done. Stick around. <laughs> Angel, you're 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 mad. Angel, settle down. Y'all remember Angel? She was our she's our Great Pyrenees. Um, man, she is just growing. She's such a big girl. Stays out here with the sheep. She lives with the sheep, and uh, these are her people. So she takes good care of them. Brought her some food out this morning. Left her bowl out here, so we came to pick it up. Sheep are looking good. Um, may have a couple of pregnant girls in here we're hoping uh, we got the ram in with them that's him standing right there to the right so he's a young guy still but think he's old enough to do the job so our sheep are looking good and then we got pumpkin and jack and hamlet over here and we pulled one of the piglets off of big mom and little mama put her in here with them and uh, that's her right there she is really growing um, as you can see, Pumpkin and Jack, man, they are, shoo, Lord of mercy. They're getting chunky, doing their, really doing their thing. So, remember we got another section of fence over here for um, the ones up top that we're going to wean. And then, coming up in a couple of days, we're going to be going over to um, Bristol, Virginia, uh, Warsham Springs Farm. Uh, our buddy Tyler Leonard over there, he's got some piglets. We're going to be picking up some piglets off of him. And we're going to be going with our friends uh, Jamie and Sarah from Seven Stands Farm. So if you've not subscribed to their YouTube channel, they're just getting that off the ground. Jamie does a whole lot of goat stuff. We've kind of talked him into get, talked him into getting pigs. So he's either going to be our best friend or our worst enemy after he gets some pigs on his farm. But uh, if you've not checked out Seven Stands Farm, go over and check out their channel. Got a lot of cool stuff going on with their goats. Um, if you're interested in myotonics, um, and just learning some of the some of the basics about goat care. Uh, I think he's going to end up having a really really nice channel over there. So go check those guys out. And then you got this one over here who's needing a baby goat. We've decided baby pigs is where it's at though. And you can't beat a baby you can't beat a baby pig now. They're just as cute as they can be. So, but anyway, Pumpkin Jack Hamlet, and uh, we've not we the new girl. We've not given her a name. We may have to come up with a name for her. We're gonna get her butt stung right there in a second. What? No, uh, they're not using that water yet. So here's another area that, I mean, and that we're just right out from the pigs. There have not been any pigs on this area here in, gosh, I guess over a year. Um, we have had chickens on it. We ran the chicken tractors across it, and then we've had the, uh, the egg mobile on it a couple times. But look at this. I mean, it's just void of anything, and it just gets so wet and stays so wet, and it's just mucky. Um, we are letting the chickens pretty much free range right now. Um, learn some pros and some cons with that. Um, one of the pros, uh, the eggs are really actually a whole lot better. Um, and I think because they're foraging a whole lot more. They're not eating near as much feed um, as they were. We could put uh, 100 pounds of feed in the egg mobile there when we had the netting up around them. And it would last about two days, maybe three days. Now we can put 100 pounds of feed in there and it'll last, gosh, six or seven days. So it's lasting over twice as long as it was. But again, I think it's because 
they're getting out and foraging for more. The con, um, we've lost some to predators. We've come out a couple of mornings and found some piles of feathers and, you know, it's obvious what had happened. And uh, we didn't get a basket, so we come out to get eggs, but we didn't get a basket. Well, stuff a, yeah, I stuff a bag down in a feed bucket and we can just put eggs down in that and that'll work. Yeah, we'd be dangerous if we can remember something. Ain't no doubt about that. You want to show them what happened to your hair? All the, all the hair's gone. Got her all, all, all her hair cut off. Even though it's winter in the lights you know we don't have much daylight we're still getting about 45 to 50 a day so i mean they're they're still cranking a few out here can't complain too much at them good bunch of girls a lot of these are getting older um, that's the reason for the new egg laying chickens up at the house and the Siskovich tractors that we're wrestling with trying to keep them healthy is uh, a lot of these girls like that buff right there that's a three-year-old chicken. She's been here for a long time. She's old. All the buffs are old. They were some of our first ones. Any of the Rhode Island Reds, if there's any of them left, they're old. They must be bedded down. Yeah, right there they are. <clears throat> so folks this right here is the sign of happy pigs they are bedded down right there snoozing staying warm taking it easy now one of these spotted girls down here was bred three weeks ago today so a common question that I get is how can you tell if a pig is pregnant you would expect her if she was not pregnant to be in heat and based on the signs that we've seen uh, from these girls in the past if she was in heat she'd be up here at the top of the hill snorting rooting around jumping on everybody's backs but everybody here is just as calm as a cucumber laid out taking it easy of course now we're down here bothering them but uh Nobody's showing any signs of heat and one of these spotted girls should be showing signs of heat today if She didn't settle from the AI the other day, so I think we're good there um, We're gonna watch the rest of them over the course of the next three weeks Make sure nobody else come make sure that they don't come back in heat. We do have one that needs to be AI'd that one at you. This one looking at me. Yeah, this one right here looking right at me. She she is to be bred so She's still got a couple days before she comes back into heat, but we're going to get a dose, some doses ordered for her and see if we can get her uh, inseminated as well. Yep. Yeah, that girl right there, she's the one that was, that was bred three weeks ago today. So if she was in heat, we would expect to see some signs, but she's, yeah, she's not showing any signs of heat. Not aggressive. Yeah, you're something, ain't you, baby? So one thing that we typically ask a lot of folks is to leave a comment down below where you are. And if you've never done that, um, go, down, drop, go down below and leave me a comment uh, where you're from. But I'm interested in what you do. Um, what kind of work do you do? Are you farming full time? Are you a computer programmer? Are you a mechanic, a lawyer, doctor, whatever the case may be? Leave me a comment down below what you do for a living um, and what's your interest in farming? Uh, are you currently farming? Are you thinking about getting into farming? Uh, did you used to farm and you just enjoy watching this because um, you know maybe it's it's something that you used to do or something you're something that you're interested in but leave me a comment down below tell me a little bit about you about your interest here and and we love we love interacting with folks we've we've gotten so many emails and text messages and stuff from folks and we just we love interacting with everybody and you know kind of finding out about y'all y'all get to see a whole lot about us but I don't I don't know much about uh, about the folks that that watch us so uh, fill us in tell us about yourself
these guys need some shavings right here how are these guys on shavings oh yeah these guys are good oh man there's a dead one in here there's a dead one in here these are our egg laying chickens that we got back in November um, been trying to keep kind of a deep bedding method on them inside these Siskovich tractors um, working better in, on one or two of them than it is on the other one that other one is just continues to stay wet and we've moved it three times so we're gonna put some more shavings on it <clears throat> we've lost quite a few of these lesson learned for us it's just not a good idea to get uh, egg laying chickens get chicks in the late late fall and try to raise them through the winter we've just not we've not done very well at all with that So we came out, the piglets were down in here. I thought I was recording, but I was talking and the daggone camera wasn't on. But anyway, the piglets were down here in their catch pen and they were eating out of the uh, tire feeder. And I know it's kind of nasty right now. But what I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by not hitting the record button, we had a terrible rainstorm here yesterday, ended about 24 hours ago. And our property is just, I mean, it's crazy muddy. And right here where I'm standing, <clears throat> this is the area that we moved the uh, sows and the piglets off of a couple weeks ago now and I mean it's just so muddy everything just stays so wet the the property drains pretty good um, but it just it's like there's water coming up out of the ground whenever it does it's just it's just unbelievable the mamas the area they're on I mean it's wore out beat up it's time for them to move um, it's just it's just a mess out here <clears throat> interesting story I want to share with y'all real quick yesterday morning it's about 33 32 degrees pouring the rain uh, Sondra had come out to do chores because I had a conference call that I had to get on she sticks her head in the door and says I need some help quick little mama's out we come out here little mama is out I mean she is completely out of the fence she's gotten out she's out wandering around and the piglets you know we we're getting ready to wean them and so they're in this wire and they kind of come and go under the wires they want to the piglets are gone they're nowhere to be found so <clears throat> bring little mama back out get her back in the fence get it turned on make sure it's nice and hot all that stuff you know that we need to do with fencing and uh Sandra, david and myself go out and start looking for piglets again and we're out looking out looking and we're you know we're all over the property just kind of we're, we're starting to reach a panic is what's happening <clears throat> and uh, walk back up towards the house which from here is that way and little mama is out again and we find her up at the top of the hill up there and she's got <laughs> 11 little piglets in tow so 
she was able to do what we couldn't do. She went out and found those suckers and uh, led everybody back home and uh, brought them home. But it was a full on cold rain, nasty panic um, when you can't find 11 piglets um, and they're just gone. We figured out they were over here in the woods, thick, thick, thick stand of bamboo right straight ahead right there. We figured they had gotten over in there to take some additional cover uh, from the rain and get in out of the out of the nastiness. So that was our big excitement yesterday morning. And uh, little mama here is an escape artist, ain't you, girl? Yes, you are. Yeah. So we could, you know, I mean, look at this. And this is, you know, this is not an area where we've had animals consistently for a while. Um, you know, we could catch them in here, but I, I couldn't get the tractor out here to move them. I mean, this is, and this stuff is, I mean, this wears you out to walk in this. It's like trying to walk on tin that's covered in axle grease or something. It just wears you out to keep you balanced. But, I mean, this is just a muddy mess. And then to try to get the tractor out here, you know, it's heavy. It's going to mar up. We're just going to have a terrible, terrible time. Took a suggestion from a number of y'all that said the, the box wasn't tall enough. We agreed. Um, so I took a couple of these um, sideboards that we used to use on the truck when we would transport piglets. <clears throat> and David attached those to the top of the box and uh, had a couple of gaps. So we just cut a, a few pieces of plywood. You can see he done a little bit of rustic decor right there, um, adding those uh, couple of sticks of wood just to be able to put the screw, have something for the screws to catch purchase on. But uh, we got our box here, so the box is set up. I feel a whole lot better about it. Oh man, I feel a whole lot better about it <clears throat> than we did earlier. But uh, got the box still set up. The pin works. I mean, they're they're going in there, but it's just man, it's just so muddy to try to move them right now. So that's kind of uh, our evening routine right now. Uh, this time of year, uh, winter time, it gets dark around here a little bit after five o'clock. So once work's done and you know you got to try to get out and get stuff get your chores and all completed and get that stuff knocked out before it gets too late um it just makes for kind of a kind of a short afternoon and then you know we've had all this mud i mean i'm anyway i'm just rambling on about one thing and then another um appreciate y'all watching if y'all subscribed hit that subscribe button a couple other videos over here other stuff we've got going on appreciate y'all following along with us and we'll see you on the next video thanks